Today on Shop Nation, I upgrade my miter saw and try my hand at solving the miter saw dust collection problem using engineering and 3D printing. And uh, totally blown away with the result. So I've been stuck in this circular argument with myself for the past couple of years. I know that I desperately wanted to do something about the lack of dust collection on my miter saw, but I also knew that I wanted to upgrade the saw. So I decided not to tackle anything until I got the new saw, but the dust collection kept bothering me, but I hadn't bought a new saw yet. Which brings us to here, which is my new miter saw. And my decision process and reasoning for ultimately going with the rigid 4251 is a topic for a whole other video, which I plan to address at some point. But ultimately it comes down to capacity. You see, I can cross cut up to 17 inches on this saw, which is a monstrous 10 inches more than my previous saw. And because of the space age bendy arm technology, I can get that entire footprint within my existing miter station. And for those of you with a keen eye who may look at that and say, that looks just like the Delta Cruiser, you would be correct. It is basically a Delta Cruiser with orange bits instead of blue ones. But that's not why we're here. We are here to solve the miter saw dust problem. Now it's pretty well known that the miter saw is the biggest slob in the shop and makes the biggest mess because the dust collection on pretty much all of them sucks. And there seems to be really only three options for addressing this. Number one, ignore it completely. Pretend like it doesn't exist and just acknowledge the fact that you're gonna have to clean up every time you use it. That's essentially what I've been doing for the last couple of years. And number two is hook up a dust collection hose to the standard fittings and uh, hope for the best. Because hope is all you have. Every one of the dust collection fittings seems to be a design afterthought and really don't do much to capture any dust. Also, side note, that saw as well as the Delta Cruiser might have the worst standard dust collection, which makes what I'm trying to do even more important. And finally, Finally, number three is building a giant enclosure around it, sealing the front up as best you can, hooking a big dust collector up to it, hoping, again, that something is better than nothing. And basically, those three options, um, they suck. And as an engineer, I want to solve this damn thing. And the first step to solving any problem is to understand the problem. Now, obviously, the wood chips and sawdust are typically shot towards the back of the saw. So if we think about how we want to catch the sawdust, we really have a wide range of angles that we need to understand before we can design something to then catch it. But there's another factor, and that's really the speed or momentum of the sawdust and chips that are getting shot towards the back of the saw. One thing you can see when you watch a cut in slow motion is how much sawdust and wood chips are bouncing off of things. And this includes some of the chutes and fittings that are meant to collect the sawdust in the first place. So it comes down to how do we redirect and capture that wedge shape of sawdust angles such that it can be removed with a relatively low flow rate of air generated by my vacuum system or a dust collector. Well, one of the problems with trying to design one for a miter saw like this that moves this way as well as this way is trying to understand in what condition are we designing it for. Now, if I'm honest with myself, most of my cuts are gonna be kind of right in this vicinity here. Yes, I will be using this for larger cross cuts, but I don't necessarily need to account for dust generated way back here to the back of the saw. So I think by limiting our window to operating kind of right here is gonna make our design a little bit easier and make it more efficient in this condition where again, I'll be using it most often. And I'm also going to ignore, at least for now, mitered cuts in either direction. I'll actually make this thing removable so that if I ever do that, which is very rare, I can just remove the contraption, whatever we're gonna make, make those angled cuts, clean up the mess, and then put it back. I think I'm gonna make our contraption fit right in this back area. And to quickly mock up that design, I'm gonna use this black poster board and some hot glue just to get my general design down, and then we'll go back with a more permanent solution afterwards.
So I actually found a pretty cool use for these profile tools, besides transferring weird shapes to things like flooring and trim pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and ditch the standard little chute adapter that comes with the saw to make room for the new solution. Also, while I'm here, might as well upgrade the blade to a nice 80 tooth fine finish blade. All right, and with that, our quick and dirty mock-up is now done. I really love using poster board and hot glue for stuff like this because you can do it really fast and it lets you easily figure out the shape and general form factor you need in your design. So for example, I know exactly how far this needs to be to clear the saw as it's going in and out. I know the location of the dust port such that it clears the arms as it's moving in and out. I know the general shape of this back cavity that it's actually gonna fit down within, which would have been really hard to just measure. It's way easier to build a simple mock-up like this and then now build off of that. And for the final build, because I have a 3D printer army at my disposal, I'm actually gonna 3D print this thing in several different pieces that's gonna allow me to iterate it even more. Now, if you don't have a small army of 3D printers at your disposal, that's okay. You can make this out of a lot of different materials like scrap pieces of wood, pieces of plastic, all kinds of stuff, just get creative. The benefit of me doing it with a 3D printer is because I'm gonna go model this in 3D and that's gonna allow me to put a lot of contours and things that are really gonna assist hopefully, in getting the dust out of this thing efficiently. And while I'm modeling that on Fusion 360, let's talk about proper shop attire. Now here's the thing, I don't have the best track record of wearing the greatest stuff in the shop while I'm working, both from a durability standpoint and a what the hell are you thinking standpoint. Which is why I'm really excited to have partnered with Timberland Pro, which is the sponsor of today's video. Now maybe you were like me and you thought Timberland Pro just made things like boots. Well I was really happy to find out that they make a lot of other stuff, all of which I'm actually wearing right now. That's right, they've got everything from work shirts to vests to a lot of cold weather gear, which I've been using a lot over this past winter because being cold in your shop while you're working not so fun. But they really have just about everything covered, including these casual looking tennis shoes with a composite safety toe, so I can wear these when I'm working in shorts. And one of my favorites is actually this soft shell jacket. It's a little bit lighter duty, but you can wear it pretty much anywhere. You don't have to just wear this in your shop. It's got really convenient pockets everywhere. The quality construction's really good. Plus with rain repel technology, you won't get wet if you're working outside. And the next one I really like is this honcho hoodie. And it is way more than just a sweatshirt. It's got the regular hand pocket right here, but it's also got a separate zippered pocket above it. I think that's kind of a cool touch. It also kind of has a quarter zip zipper on the top, which means if you're wearing a lot of layers and you need a little bit more room, you can open and close that. And one of my favorite features, it's got a built-in face mask. Now this won't stop COVID, but it sure as heck will make a big difference on a cold day. Or you could, I don't know, rob a bank. So if you're interested in checking out any gear in this collection, click the link down in the description to learn more. So big thanks to Timberland Pro for being both my footwear and apparel partner. Let's go see if I'm done modeling. Now, if you're sitting there thinking that 3D printing just looks so damn cool and you want to learn a bit more, I actually did an explainer video a few months back where I break down each step from concept sketch to 3D model to printing. I would suggest you go check that out if you're interested. All right, so the day has come for final assembly. And what looks like a random assortment of parts makes up our final product. Now I broke up the design in a lot of little pieces so that I can iterate and tweak things without having to reprint the entire thing. And the entire thing is assembled using these tiny little number two screws in varying lengths.
All right, and with that, we're done with the bottom half of the design. You can see this is obviously where the dust comes in, and you've got this internal baffle here, which is located by that cool little dovetail joint, probably the only dovetail joint you're ever gonna see on this channel. And the baffle really is just meant to serve to redirect dust out this side, which is where we're gonna have the dust collector hooked up to, and prevent stuff from building up back here and reducing the efficiency. You'll also notice this little thing right here. We'll talk about that once I install it. But all we have to do now is add on all the top pieces and then try it out. <laughs> and with that, the spaceship is alive. The last thing I had to do was put in some magnets in the flange for the adapter, as well as the flange on the unit itself. I modeled in way too many magnet holes. Four is plenty for this connection. This is gonna make taking on and off the hose obviously really quick and easy. Now let's go give it a test fit and we'll see how it works. All right, so it should just fit right back here. Boom, just like that. Now, if you're curious about this little tab right here, this is actually going to help lock it in place. So this just kind of wedges up against that. Now this thing isn't going anywhere. Let's try clearance check. So it looks like we got about a, maybe just over an eighth of an inch between the top and this sliding mechanism. And clearance around the blade looks good as well. Nice and tight around here. Okay, I think we're ready to try it out. All right, we need to establish a baseline. So I'm gonna make eight cuts out of this one by four material. Why eight, you ask? Science. And then we'll take a look at the saw and the area to figure out how much dust is around, which I'm imagining is a lot. All right, I've cleaned out the saw and the area around it, so we're starting with the same blank slate. Now let's test out the new dust collector. I did not see that coming. Now, it's not like I thought I'd nail this the first try. I thought maybe I'd probably have to tweak or iterate a little bit, but it basically does nothing. Now, I don't know if you agree or not, but based on the results after each cut, it kind of looked the same. One having no dust collection and the other having a super highly over-engineered 3D printed monstrosity dust collection. I checked the blast gate, it was open. I felt suction, the dust collector's not clogged. But this is just kind of how it goes sometimes when you're trying to solve a problem. Not everything you think of is gonna work perfect every time. Now, one thing I noticed during the test is that when I had the dust collection system on it, the dust was highly concentrated just above it. It's almost like it redirected it all up, which I don't understand. Versus with nothing hooked up to it, it was just kind of everywhere. Very strange indeed. So I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna keep trying to tackle this. There's gotta be some way I can improve it. And maybe in some future video, I can show you what I did to hopefully fix this problem. But as of right now, Miter saw one, Travis zero. I hope this video was at least entertaining. It wasn't quite the ending I would have drawn up for myself, but again, that's just how it goes sometimes. I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna keep trying to tackle this. If you have ideas on how I can do that, leave those down in the comments below. Or if you have this saw or the Delta Cruiser and you've already solved it, I'm all ears. I will catch you guys on the next project. And until then, keep trying to pursue, at least, shop greatness. <laughs>